I love that that atmosphere that it sets up. Mom? Mom? Drive by movies, you're watching Fresh Releases. My name is Blaze. And my name is James. And this week we're talking about Cobweb. You have a beautiful imagination. It's going to get you into trouble one day. Cobweb is finally out on video on demand just in time for Halloween because this movie came out during the summer for some reason when it's an actual Halloween movie. Either way, the movie is about an eight year old boy who tries to investigate the mysterious knocking sounds that are coming from inside the walls of his house, unveiling a dark secret that his sinister parents have kept hidden from him. So this is a movie I've been looking forward to um, throughout the entire summer. I remember just seeing the poster and then reading Anthony Starr was in it. And this is such a weird thing to say these days. But anything Seth Rogen produces, I'm kind of just on board for ever since uh, I never got around to seeing Preacher, but uh, his work on The Boys was great. And then uh, after seeing Ninja Turtles, as well as like, you know, some of the other comedy or action movies he's like produced or as well as like, you know, just like uh, shows as well, too. Just he's been doing great. I like everything he's been doing behind the camera outside, like his comedic acting work. Um, And so, yeah, I was really looking forward to this movie. It just I never got the opportunity to see it, though only time it was playing was always like at one theater in LA and it was always like four o'clock one night, 620 another night, 10 o'clock the other night. It was only one screening a day and I was just like, I just can't make this work. Uh, and finally got to see it, but I want to hear your thoughts, Blaze. What are you thinking on this movie? So I have to say, James, you picked another one of those movies that just is, is shot in infinite darkness and, <laughs> and impossible for me to watch. And I think I'm going to have to just start kiboshing every movie that gives that vibe based on the trailer or even the promotional material. Just looking at this poster, I can tell I ain't going to be able to see this whole movie and we're never since we're not watching if i watch this movie in theaters i think it'd be a different story but this is one of those where like they really effectively use the fact that all these new cameras can use can shoot in low light which is awesome and it's so cool to see that in a theater but watching it at home the experience is just never never a good time i have to say i thought this movie was very interesting but that always puts a hamper on it where i can't see I don't even think I ever saw the monster, to be honest. Like, and I know they show it. Like, I had yeah. to look. I had to look it up like later. Like, dude, what did this thing even look like? And sh- they show it pretty good. But yeah, for some reason, I don't know what it is with my TV or what, but I cannot see anything that's shot this low light. Like all the scenes that are in the daytime, perfect. I can see it, no problem. But yeah, this is one of those movies where it's very moody, very atmospheric, and a lot of it is shot in in this uh, kind of cellar area. Uh, where there's almost little to no light uh, peeking in. So it's definitely one of those movies that would work awesome in a theater. And it it boasts a short runtime too, which is really enjoyable. So I think overall, uh, I would enjoy this movie maybe on a rewatch, but when it comes to the viewing circumstances that I have, uh, it's just rough not being able to see basically anything. Yeah, I'm curious. What was that movie that I picked uh, like a couple of months ago? Uh, I know that was also... What was that? I forget what it was. What what movie we watched? But it's the same thing where I like yeah. it's 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 almost like that movie. This film very much reminds me of the hole in the ground. But I think uh-huh. even we could see the hole in the ground, like essentially. Right. But but this was what I forget what movie it was. I have to look go look it up. But yeah, there right. was a movie in this summer I couldn't see anything. I know we reviewed it here on the show, um, but yeah, like, uh, and 100% I agree with you on this too. Uh, I started it in during the morning and uh, so I have skylights in my living room. It usually doesn't affect my viewing experience though, because you know, I have a flat screen TV, it's in 4K. It's normally pretty bright. And when I was watching, I was just like, I did, I was in Vegas over the weekend and I had my uh, sibling uh, using my apartment while I was gone. And just, uh, I was like, did she change any of my settings? 
kids. And no, that wasn't the case. I had to turn up the brightness uh, like crazy, but no, all the brightness settings are at what they were normally were. And I really did struggle seeing this movie. I noticed it was best to watch the movie when I was standing up, like going to like refill my coffee or, you know, grab a snack to watch the movie with too, just because when I was sitting on my couch, it was brutal watching this movie because I couldn't see. It does work to some of the effect with like, uh, I'm not sure what the CGI of the creature looks like within this movie or the monster, but I really love the way they looked in the movie. It really creeped me out. But I assume maybe the CGI might not have been that great. So it might have worked to its benefit for me in that case or reasoning. Uh, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed this movie and really did like it and highly recommend it. But 100% that did hold this movie back for me. It's not like we watched like a bad copy of this movie. We watched it on Amazon Prime. We rented it on there and for and it definitely should be working. It's in 4K quality just for whatever reason. It's just not uploaded greatly or just or I'm not sure if uh, or maybe that is just the final look of the movie. It just didn't translate well. No, I mean, it's just made for theaters. It's basically made yeah. for you to watch in a completely dark room. And sometimes that's just not always attainable. Like it's just and even sometimes when I will close all the curtains, everything in the room to make it entire, like I, I like as close to pitch black as I can. It's still just I don't know. The brightness is not. Uh, maybe the brightness isn't calibrated on the TV, but I mean, I can go on. I've been rewatching a lot of the Friday the 13th films, uh, you know, for the, for the season, but it, I could go and watch, you know, a Halloween movie or Friday the 13th or whatever. And there's scenes that are shot at night and it, you know, I can see what's going on fine. There's still enough contrast, uh, but it just feels like a lot of the newer style movies that take place at night, they want it to be realistically like at night, at night. So where, you know, the littlest light is just barely blue and you can kind of see it, but not really. But yeah, I just, I, I, that's like a trend that's been going on with a lot of these newer like uh, horror movies. And it's just not really a trend that I've been enjoying at all. I just, I, I enjoy being able to see everything. I, I mean, realistically, if we're, if we're they're trying to be super realistic about it being at nighttime and like if it was at nighttime, your your eyes do adjust at some point to where you can see pretty much even if there is minimal amounts of light. So it just seems like they're trying to make it as realistic as possible, where it looks like it's shot in pure darkness or at night. But it just it, it makes for a really slog of a viewing experience and disappointing at times where you just want to be able to see what's going on. I don't want to have to be able to squint or close every single curtain make sure that the brightness on my tv is calibrated specifically for this movie it would be great in a theater but just that's not the case for every for every movie you can watch you know especially some of these movies where this you mentioned you're in la one of the biggest film markets and this was only playing at like one theater one screening uh and it the screening jumped every every uh day the time the time frame so uh i think one of the other films that we had watched i know no one will save you is kind of similar and that was specifically a uh you know a uh, streaming movie uh, yeah. I think the other one we had met, uh, we had checked out maybe, oh, Hellraiser. Was it Hellraiser? I couldn't see shit, that whole movie. That was another <laughs> one. That was another one. Yeah, I couldn't see anything like the entire film, I feel like. Another one of those really dark tone movies. And that movie was released specifically for streaming or I'm not sure if it was made with the intention of streaming, but I know that was like, you know, it, can't, it premiered on Hulu, though. Um, but yeah, I really wish I got a chance to see it in theaters just because the vibes of this movie are really cool. And it's not like it's the whole movie, too, because the daylight scenes look great. Um, everything that's shot at the school uh, really captures just that eerie fall vibe of a small town and just the grotesqueness of this house and the creepiness of just like the wallpaper within this movie too. Uh, it has the look, has the shots and everything, but yeah, it's just really me. Well, of course the finale, the final 30 minutes of the movie is in these dark sequences. And of course, some of the creepier scenes are like all these dream elements that we get throughout the movie. But yeah, they're really hard to see. And it does work to its advantages at times, but there's times where also I really wanted to get a good look at the creature. And uh, it's, you know, kind of good to, you know, shy away and give the audience as little as possible and let them like kind of, you know, use their imagination. But there are shots where you are intended to see it. And I was just like, 
what? I need to kind of zoom in here and just like, you know, stand up to see better. And that was the, like I said earlier, that's the only time I was able to check it out. But yeah, just overall, this is like a fun, just vibey movie that we don't get a lot of and really liked uh, that. It was like, you know, a very short, digestible movie. And I'm so surprised that Lionsgate only I think they did like an AMC exclusive thing. I remember having AMC a list at the time this came out still. And that's how I first found out about the movie. But I never really looked into it. And then eventually just I saw some reviews of it coming out on YouTube, just decent word of mouth. And then that's what really captured my eye. But by that time, though, it was only playing at like one or two very small indie theaters that just had very difficult times for me to check out. So, you know, I, sn I snoozed and I lost, I guess. But uh, in the end, I still got I finally got a chance to see it. Yeah, it, this film is just I love that that atmosphere that it sets up like this Halloween atmosphere, all the pumpkins and everything. And they play a pivotal point in this in this film. But it just sets up this awesome tone that that works so well, um, aside from for, you know, a lot of the dark moments where they are showing us like this creature almost. And I, I love uh, I love the, vi the villain in this movie. I thought it was just really cool. I like the twists and turns that the film takes, especially it kind of plays on the tropes that we have watching these type of horror movies with like the creepy parents like it plays on that trope really well and uh it's just this film definitely felt refreshing and i think that was the most important thing about coming out of this movie i'm like all right this feels very refreshing for a horror film uh that you know played with tropes that you've seen before but did it in different ways Right, yeah, I was actually really caught off guard by there not really being a good character within this movie. Like, of course, you're with this kid the whole time, but does some pretty horrible things, uh, despite him being bullied by both his parents as well uh, as, uh, you know, the kids at school. The only person that's really nice to him and the only person that's overall like a good person is really just the substitute teacher. Um, but, you know, the parents like, you know, they're not like the most cruel and they do have the best intentions towards their son. But as the movie progresses, of course, you learn that, you know, they are awful people without spoiling too much. And then there's this voice that we hear, this creature that you hear throughout the movie. And you're wondering like, oh, this poor person abused. And then you find out that, no, they're awful, too. And have been manipulating this poor kid. And just the parents are just, yeah, like I, I was really caught off guard. I was expecting more because Anthony Starr is now becoming a pretty big, well-known actor. And Lizzie Kaplan, a lot of people know who she is and stuff, too. Um, and just, you know, they make a very believable, nice couple. But just you don't really get to see that. It's really creepy. You get like one nice family dynamic scene followed by a creepy nightmare scene and then just followed by a very abusive scene, too. So the movie keeps you guessing and thinking. And by the time the movie like kind of twists and turns, it's like overall, like just very fun and unexpected. Yeah, I, I thought that this film was uh, really a surprise. Uh, I just wish that maybe I could have seen it in theaters. I wish I had a bigger theater run. And uh, yeah, I think that that would have helped. I, I understand that like the Halloween season is a little, it's usually packed with releases, but not necessarily like Halloween releases. I mean, the past three weeks, Eris has dominated the box office. So, uh, you know, Martin Scorsese's movie came out and that only took second place that box office weekend, even though it made more uh, money than I think it was expected. Uh, yeah, just it, it seems like, you know, the, there's been a couple movies this this month that have been able to shift the landscape in terms of like there's not that many horror movies coming out. I know the last week in October we, we got uh, Five Nights at Freddy's, but that's also premiering on Peacock as well. So that's not really going to bite into that Taylor Swift uh, piece of the pie, I guess. Yeah, um, it's a bummer because I was hoping that this year was the year where horror would be, you know, the reigning champion. But it seems like uh, it's mainly September movies uh, that were the reigning champions of October uh, with Saw X and, you know, Exorcist Believer. The first week of October didn't really make a big chomp in the box office. So kudos to Taylor Swift. Uh, missed opportunity this year. We're always saying it constantly. There's always someone who misses the mark and just like nobody wants to compete against Michael Myers the last three years. And this is the year for someone to become the new champion. And the, I mean, I guess saw technically one, but did they really? Maybe not a whole lot. So it's a bummer. Like Lionsgate missed opportunity. 
Uh, let us know what your thoughts on the movie Cobweb are. It doesn't seem like too many people have still seen it. Highly recommend you check it out. Be sure to watch it through our Amazon affiliate link in our description box below and let us know what you thought about it down below in the comments. And if you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button, hit the subscribe button and click that notification bell to get all the latest updates. And if you can't get enough of uh, these videos, be sure to catch all our other videos on social media like Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. We also write our own personal letterbox reviews, so check out our own personal accounts on the description box below, too. That'll conclude this week's episode. Tune in next week for a brand new video.